The truth is, as a coder, you have the ability to create 3D artwork that even professional 3D artists with decades of experience might not be able to create. Generative artist David Mignot creates beautiful, intricate 3D artwork using only Python and Blender. He then sells them for thousands of dollars on various NFT platforms. Whether you're looking to make money with art or just doing it for fun, it's actually really easy to get started making art with code. In this video, I'm gonna show you how to make this block pyramid of AWS service icons using 100% Python code. No 3D modeling experience necessary. The first thing you'll need to do is download Blender, which is open source and totally free. Open Blender and click on the scripting tab. This is where you're gonna write your code. If you wanna use AWS architecture icons on the pyramid, you can get those for free as well from the AWS website. But you can use any images you like, as long as they have a one-to-one -one aspect ratio. In other words, they have to be square. All right, let's get started coding. I'm not gonna go over every single line of code, just blocks of code and the high-level ideas behind them. If you have any questions on anything, let me know in the comments and I'll try my best to answer them. And if you like this video, feel free to like and subscribe. All right, let's get started. All right, here we go. So we have our cube pyramid here. There are really two core components of this code. One is a cube and that's the easier to understand part. We can create a cube using code and we can place it anywhere in 3D Euclidean space. So we have three axes, Z, X, and Y. Z is up and down from this perspective. And then X is kind of this way and Y is this way. The more complicated thing to understand is materials. And materials are the way that objects in the scene react to light and how they look. So we can see the cubes have images on them, AWS, architecture icons and the plane underneath the pyramid of cubes is kind of reflective it's kind of like a black metallic material of sorts and in blender materials can get pretty complicated a material is comprised of a set of nodes and each node has an effect on how that material behaves in the scene and so i'm not going to go into too much detail on materials beyond what's in this scene so we have a directory of aws architecture icons and each cube in the period gets a random architecture icon placed on all of its faces so that's what you see here we see um, you specify the directory that contains the png files that you want to use to place on these cubes so if you don't want to use aws architecture icons just place whatever png files you want in this directory okay so starting from the top uh, we're importing some stuff BPY is kind of the Blender API. So that's a library that contains all the functions we're gonna to use to manipulate the scene. Uh, we're gonna import math because we have to do some radian to pers uh, degree conversions for the camera. OS, it, because we need to, we're gonna be loading files from the file system. Random, uh, we wanna be able to, each cube gets a random icon put on all of its faces. And so random allows us to do that. Uh, we also, I'm getting ahead of myself here, but we wanna see the random number generator because if we find a configuration of cubes that we like, we wanna be able to go back to that configuration. So if we seed it with the number six and we decide we like that, but we wanna look at other options, we could seed it with other things and then decide that, oh no, six was better, let's go back to six. The other thing that the program allows you to specify is the width of the base of the cube or the pyramid. So if you look from the top down, there's 13. If you look at this middle row here, there's 13 cubes. If you specify a lower number, it'll make the entire pyramid smaller. Then we specify the directory of that contains all the PNG icons that we wanna use to randomly place on the faces. Now, the first thing we're gonna do when the program starts is we're gonna delete. We wanna be able to iterate on the script quickly. So we wanna be able to rerun it every time we make a change. That means that there's gonna be a bunch of objects in the scene when we first run it potentially. So the first thing we do is just remove all materials in the scene, remove all objects in the scene. So we're starting with a clean slate and that's what these two blocks of code do. Then we set the background color, which is black. That's what all these lines do. And then we make the materials. So this one line, this helper function actually grabs all the files in that directory that we specified earlier and makes each one into its own material in the Blender scene. Make mats takes a directory, builds a list of materials. And each material I mentioned is a set of nodes. And one of those nodes is gonna be the actual image data from the file. And then the node after that is going to be BSDF principled node and that node controls how the object emits light and so what we want to do in this scene is we want bright parts of the image to emit light so the cubes are actually emitting light from the bright parts so if you look at the lambda cube the, the lambda itself is white and so we want blender to, to see that white in that lambda and emit light from that, those points on the cube face and so that's what the BSDF principled node does. The first thing you want to do is uh, make a new material, tell it to use nodes, because uh, I think for legacy reasons, you don't always 
a material doesn't always use nodes. We want to start with a clean slate, remove all the existing nodes, because I think when you create a material, it has like some default nodes that we would want to just get rid of. The output node is just the node that you send everything to once you're done. So that's the node that actually takes the behaviors from its input and displays them in the scene. And then we're going to put some attributes on the BSDF node to kind of control how bright the bright parts of the material are. That's what emission strength is. And then we're going to add a shader node text image node, which is actually what uh, incorporates the that PNG image into the material. Don't worry about the details here. Uh, just know that the image node actually controls the emission of the material as well as how that material looks. So not only can you see a lambda on the cube face, we can also see the light emitted from the lambda itself. So that's all this is doing. And then we have a UV map node, which is actually what controls how that 2D image is mapped onto that cube face. And when I was building this, this is actually the most complicated part for me is to programmatically kind of resize that image so it fits nicely on the cube face. I actually spent a lot of time on this. I posted on message boards, but eventually got it working. More on that in a bit. And so, yeah, I, I mentioned this set of nodes is a graph that ultimately makes up the material. You'll see we're connecting these graph nodes here. And so we have that list of materials now, and each material is similar, but it represents a different architecture image. Yeah, the floor, make floor mat just makes the material, it's just some hard-coded values essentially to make that plane at zero on the z-axis. And so that plane is slightly reflective, but it's a rough reflection, as you can see in the final render. And uh, yeah, it has a base color of black. Okay, so the build pyramid set of functions uh, kind of reads like a programming interview question solution might read. But essentially the, the, the strategy here, I'm not going to go into too much detail, but build pyramid takes in like the origin of the period, the, what are the coordinates x, y, and z where you want the pyramid to be centered on, and it also takes a number of cubes that you want in the thickest row. So we pass in 13 in this example. So you can see there's 13 cubes here. And so the strategy here is it makes it layer by layer, kind of ascending on the z-axis. So it makes the bottom layer first. Each level consists of a row, a set of rows. And so I have a function for building a level and then the build level function called build row. And it builds rows uh, that get sequentially smaller until there's only one cube for each row. And levels get sequentially smaller as, as well, similar to rows. I have a feeling there's a way to do this in a more efficient manner. I'd love to hear if anyone has an ideas on how to optimize this. I feel like the le build level and build row functions can kind of be consolidated a little bit. That's So that's what the build pyramid function does. Make cube with material, uh, makes a cube and six one of those materials we generated on it. It pulls a random one using the random.choice method. There's a lot of stuff going on here that I won't go into too much detail on. The gist of it is that we're making sure that the image is applied to the cube face so it fills the whole cube face and doesn't get cropped. And so that's what this ultimately this smart project function is doing here. And angle limit 90 degrees means by default the image was get getting shown upside down on the cube face for whatever reason so we just need to flip it around. Now we're back to the main program. So we made the materials, we built the pyramid, and then there's a concept of a camera. So a camera is where the render is actually being done. And if you're animating, you can move the camera, so on and so forth. We specify some settings for the camera, where it's gonna be, what angle it's gonna be pointed at. I came up with these numbers by actually placing a camera in Blender itself and kind of moving it around to where I wanted it and then copying and pasting those coordinates to the program so I can, it's repeatable. So if I wanna rebuild the pyramid, I get my camera with the pyramid. The lens focal length is actually how wide that camera angle is. So a lower number is wider, higher number is, is like a more narrow field of view. 35 millimeters is about the field of view that you'd get for, with your, your own eyes. So if you wanna see the scene how you might see it if you're actually in it, you'd choose 35 millimeters for the focal length. And then we're gonna create the ground plane, which is similar to creating a cube, but we do primitive plane add, uh, give it a size and, a, and an or a location. And then we apply that material we made for the floor to that plane. And then it's kind of hard to see in, in the final render. You can kind of see in this, in the viewport, but we actually have four spotlights on the corners of the pyramid. Yeah, they don't make a huge difference, but that's what this, this logic here is for, is for placing those lights those 300 watt spotlights and pointing them at the cube. So yeah, Python and Blender, very, very powerful. This is a very simple scene, but it required no knowledge of, or very little knowledge of 3D modeling. The only thing I really did in Blender is place a camera and move it 
and figure out what coordinates I wanted the camera at. But you can get really complicated here, like you saw in David Mignot's work. These are pieces of art that a 3D artist might not be able to create easily if they didn't know how to code. So yeah, that's how we make a, uh, a block pyramid of AWS service icons. I hope you like this quick intro to generative 3D art for coders. If you'd like to see a follow-up on how to animate with code, please let me know in the comments. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.